Good afternoon um, and greetings from uh, the UK. Uh, my name is Anna Lobb. Uh, I'll be your host today. Um, thank you so much for everybody that's joined. Uh, today, uh, what we'll be doing is looking at paid content strategies uh, that work. Um, I uh, work for MPP Global. Um, my specialism is working with publishers um, to build effective strategies uh, that drive revenue, um, specifically focused on paid content. Um, so over the course of the webinar today, uh, we'll look uh, at some of the success stories. Okay, now um, this has obviously been a really engaging topic um, for a lot of you. Uh, so we actually have over 100 people attending the webinar today. Uh, so it might be difficult to stop and answer all of your questions as we go. Um, but uh, what I would do um, is encourage you um, to use the chat functions um, to submit any questions that you've got. I'll try to answer them and get to them all uh, at the end of the presentation. Or certainly personally, um, I can email and contact you directly following the webinar. Um, but since this is such an interesting topic, and so since this is obviously uh, affecting all of you and your roles daily, uh, what I would encourage is, um, as we talk about some of the strategies um, and promotions, is that you use that chat function to share some ideas, um, which we will make sure we feed back to everybody in this group um, as a learning forum uh, about how we really turn uh, these supplementary revenue revenue streams um, and digital subscription streams um, into a, a real commercial success. So what we're going to talk about uh, today, uh, we're going to touch very briefly um, on the challenges uh, in the publishing sector. We're going to look um, in some depth uh, about the success stories um, and innovative offers and incentives. Um, we're going to look at personalization and data and how that plays into strategy. Um, and then we're going to wrap up um, with just the key takeaways um, and hopefully get some time to answer your questions. So, um, as you'll all be aware, uh, the publishing sector um, has obviously been under a huge amount of change. Um, and pressure, um, certainly over the last uh, 10, five, 10 years, um, I've worked in this industry. Um, and, you know, the, the, the challenges are many, um, specifically when we're looking at paid content strategies. Um, there are lots of different issues that affect um, the people that I talk to. Um, many of you will know um, and will associate. Um, Quite often, there's talk about big data, but actually, you know, there's so much data. What's important? How can we use it? How can we make it actionable? You know, quite often, um, publishers are struggling with legacy systems that don't support digital-first strategies. Um, and also, you know, we, we have new challenges. Not only is advertising revenue declining, uh, we now also have ad blockers. Um, and we've seen a lot in the news about Adblock Plus this week. Um, so, you know, the, there's a lot to consider for publishers. Um, and the bottom line is um, that revenues have decreased. Um, and we, as um, sort of digital first executives, um, need to be creative um, and think about the ways in which we can start to build new revenue streams um, and support sustainable business models um, that appeal to the broadest demographic, including millennials. But guys, it's not all doom and gloom. Um, there are many success stories, um, and that's what we'd like to focus on today. Um, so the, the idea of the presentation, um, one of the things that um, I speak to publishers every day um, across the globe, and, and the same question is always asked of me. Uh, what works, Anna? Uh, which model should I consider? What, what, what is actually um, producing results? Uh, so what we've attempted to do today um, is look at these um, innovators and take an in-depth look at the offers and st some statistics around those offers um, to give you a bit of a feel and give you some ideas, some takeaways. Okay, um, so we're going to start off with the Financial Times. Um, but 
Before um, we look specifically at their stats, I just want to explain uh, the format of the slides and what we're trying to do here, what, what I'm trying to achieve for you. So along the bottom of the screen, um, you can see that we've included demographics um, and also the model type. Um, and this is really aimed so that um, when I send this presentation to you or the recording following the call, um, you can start to see the synergies between these publications and your own um, and understand, you know, what the differences are um, in the different publications. You know, there's no one model, no one size fits all. Um, we all have to find our niche. So the demographics and the model are there as a guide. Um, but for today, uh, what we're really interested in are the offers. Um, and how can we um, talk about success stories without looking at the Financial Times? Um, one of the biggest innovators in the UK, uh, one of the longest standing uh, you know, uh, paid content providers from the news industry. Um, they stood out from the crowd, they took a leap, uh, they moved away from uh, iTunes, um, and they just sell their, their context uh, their content directly um, to subscribers, which means they're not uh, losing the, the sort of 30% commission uh, to Apple for each transaction. And what Financial Times are doing, um, it's, it's actually, um, in a lot of ways, it's quite simplistic. They're offering these sort of re, um, risk-free um, free trials. Um, and what we've seen uh, recently um, from them. You can see if you look in the top left corner um, is that they're offering this premium digital trial. It's a four-week trial um, just uh, for one pound. Um, so it's a, a very um, low-risk offer. Um, and this offer alone um, and, and these free trial offers has actually grown their di digital subscriptions by 14% to almost 520,000. That's just by doing a very simple risk-free offer. Um, you can also see here they're doing um, things like 25% discounts um, for the full packages. Um, what else is interesting, um, and a story that we saw in the press um, a few months ago, I'm sure you will all be aware um, of the interest around Brexit and the vote in the UK. So the Financial Times did something very clever um, the night before um, the, um, we, we, the votes were announced. Uh, they dropped their paywall for a, for a day. Um, their traffic spiked. And following that, because of all the increased um, traffic driven to the website by this, this paywall drop, their subscriptions spiked um, by 600%. Um, and this was post-Brexit. So there's some really interesting um, ideas there just on uh, Financial Times alone. So moving on, again, you know, how can we talk about paid content without looking at the New York Times? These guys are global innovators. Again, they've been uh, selling digital content for years now, um, and they're really refining and diverse, uh, diversifying their product. Um, so a couple of offers that we picked out, and this is just a couple, um, but a couple of the ones that we thought were really interesting. Um, one is the diversification, which is the crossword. It's a, a standalone product. Um, just for uh, the crossword product alone, um, New York Times grossed $2 million in additional revenue just in the first quarter of this year, um, which really goes to show that you know, the, the, the content that you're using can be debundled um, and, and new products can be created as supplementary products, uh, supplementary revenue streams to the main core product, the news. Um, interestingly, and I'm moving slightly away, away from the New York Times here, um, but another um, publisher uh, that's done this recently is The Sun uh, in the UK. Um, again, they created um, a standalone fantasy football app, um, which grew. Um, it, it's now they have uh, 1.25 million subscribers purely just for the standalone fantasy football app. So it just goes to show that outside of your core news and your core content, we can debundle that, we can find areas of interest, and we can sell those as standalone offers.
Um, another thing that I'll briefly touch on for the New York Times, if you see to the right of the screen, um, what they're also doing is they're um, creating several incentives in one. So the all access pass that we see here, uh, it's a premium pass for access to all content across all devices. Um, they're offering, so it's a, a bundled package. Um, they're offering uh, four weeks for a pound, but not just that. Um, if you sign up for this uh, premium all access pass, um, they'll also give you a bonus subscription, a buy one, get one free. Uh, which you know you can send to a friend, your wife, your partner, which encourages again more traffic to be driven to the site. And in fact, the um, the offer, this buy one get one free offer, has been so successful for the New York Times, they've now extended it um, and created a secondary offer whereby they give two bonus subscriptions when you sign up and you take um, the, uh, the 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 all access the premium package. Moving on, um, another very interesting publication to look at in the UK was The Times, um, arguably one of the first publications in the UK um, to put up a paywall. I think it was back in 2009. Um, and interestingly, uh, The Times have stuck with the hard paywall model. Um, they're one of the few that still operate that model. Um, and we can see the headline stat at the top um, is that they have actually converted 60% of their users um, to uh, digital subscribers. That's up actually 45% in the past five years. Um, so they have the hard paywall, um, and we'll look um, at some of their offers in a second. But there's been some breaking news about the Times this week, um, which is although uh, their new content will remain behind a, a hard paywall, they're obviously very aware that they have an archive of content um, and that they can also use this. So what will happen is the new content will remain behind the hard paywall, but any content older than seven days will be given away from, for free. Um, so this uh, is very useful for them for search engines, driving more traffic, and means that they still benefit from the advertising revenue. So it's quite an interesting approach, hard paywall, um, but slightly dated content is for free. Um, so what we also see uh, with the Times, they have a number of offers. Um, they're using data walls. Um, so if you look top left, uh, the blue offer panel um, is an example whereby um, if you um, give them some information about yourself, maybe some data, an email address, you register, um, you can have um, two article, articles of your choice for free. Um, so that's one of the ways that they're encouraging people to register. Um, but alongside that, they have a number of other offers. Uh, they have um, an offer whereby um, you get a free 12-month uh, Spotify account. Arguably, you know, maybe here we're looking to appeal to the millennials or the younger generation. You know, most people who use Spotify are probably under 40 years old. Um, so maybe that's a nice incentive for them. You know, you can see at the demographics below, um, a lot of their audience are over 50. So maybe this is a reach out to the younger, the millennial audience. Um, but what we can also see here is uh, below that offer, they know that a number of their uh, readers or the average reader is over 50. So alongside the, the offer for the Spotify Premium, we also see offers that appeal um, to their, their sort of core demographic. Um, so hereby, uh, we're seeing subscribe and get a free voucher for Marks and Spencers, John Lewis, and House of Fraser, um, which is very popular um, with that, that slightly older demographic. Um, so we can see a number of things here happening with the times um, for innovating um, and you know, it's, I think it's quite interesting that, you know, again, they're not just sticking with one model here. Um, they have a number of offers, a number of things that they're, they're looking to generate. Okay, moving on. Um, so The Economist is quite interesting, really. Um, the Economist predominantly because uh, they're focusing on a younger audience. Their average age for readers is, is under 39. Um, and 
actually what they're looking at doing is they're focusing very much on the mobile audience. So quite an interesting stat that we found here is that 35% of millennials reach for their smartphone before they do anything else when they wake up in the morning. Um, and the economists understand that. Um, so part of their strategy, and arguably more of a retention strategy here, um, is to provide a, a product that suits that demographic. Uh, so the Espresso app, um, it's designed um, to be um, just a, a short number of um, articles each day, maybe only 120 words. Um, but it gives people access um, to uh, this sort of mobile first approach. Um, now, the app itself is free to existing subscribers, um, but you can go and buy it directly as well. Interestingly, 87% of the uptake has been existing Economist subscribers, um, but they're also engaging the younger audience, and 13% of their readers have gone directly and bought the app. Another quite interesting offer is that um, you can subscribe just for £12 uh, for 12 weeks. Um, and that's quite interesting, really, because that is all about data. Um, so quite often we might see a free, work, a free week's trial um, or perhaps a free day pass. In this case, economists give themselves the opportunity to gather data about their readers. Um, which is absolutely fantastic because, as we all know, the data itself is as valuable um, to the publisher in terms of understanding the consumers, but also in terms of being able to feed back um, information to advertisers and encourage them um, to keep placing those ads. So if we move on to uh, the Daily Mail, um, and the Daily Mail, as we know, um, the main content on the site is free. This is one of the most visited sites in the world. Um, so they certainly didn't want to um, move away from that model. Um, they need to make sure that they can still support um, this sort of free content and the traffic that visits their site. So instead, what they've done is they've created um, a, a sort of replica app um, which can be um, downloaded, um, and they've also built supplementary products. The key thing with the Daily Mail is they do have a lot of data about their readers. They know who their demographic are, um, and what they're starting to do is a lot in terms of the partner collaborations. So they know, for example, a lot of their um, a lot of their users um, work for uh, will visit Curry's or PC World. Um, so in order to drive people to the app, to, to, to download and buy the app, um, if you visit a store, you can be given three months um, free access to the app or a three-month free trial. Um, and the same partner collaborations we're seeing with a lot of our other um, clients and publishers as well. They're a really good way to get buy-in. Another one that you can see here now is if you're on a p and ferry, the moment you step onto the ferry, you have free access to the content. Um, so what they're doing here is they're encouraging readers to register, to gain access to that free content, that gives them data, and it also gives them an opportunity to go back to those readers and upsell um, content. Uh, another um, very um, interesting model is Build. Uh, so Build in Germany operate a freemium model, and there were a lot of eyes on Axel Springer uh, when these new products were released. But actually it's been a massive success. Um, they implemented the, the freemium model two years ago, um, and they now have, uh, I think the number on the screen is 392,000 digital subscriptions, which is a huge success. Um, these uh, subscriptions and customer acquisition was driven in a number of ways. Um, arguably, one of the, the, the most successful ways was to encourage the people who read uh, the newspaper in print to come online uh, and view the digital content and subscribe. They printed voucher codes in the newspapers. Uh, this was a special code so that you could go online and you could read the digital version for free on the day that you bought that paper. Um, so arguably what it's doing here is, well, what we're starting to see here is print and digital products um, working in combination uh, together. Um, so I think everyone can agree that's obviously a, a very good strategy. Okay, moving on, uh, last but not least uh, is L'Equipe in France. Um, and 
Um, Lakeep uh, actually use quite an interesting model. Uh, they have premium content on the site. Um, and they package in a number of different ways. You can have an all you can eat subscription or you can use a, a prepay micropayment. Uh, so prepay micropayment, if you don't know, uh, is where you would uh, sign up, register, load an, an amount of credit um, and then consume content against that amount. And what the keep are doing is you either buy uh, the, the full subscription or you can eat or if you like, um, you can buy each premium um, article individually. Um, so we can see the, the offers there on the screen. Um, another quite interesting, sort of hot off the press um, offer that Lakeep are doing is they're starting to address ad blocking. Um, so they've also um, launched a, a new offer um, that you'll probably see uh, throughout this week, whereby uh, they recognize if when you visit your site, their site you're using an ad blocker um, and would display a message that says, look guys, we can see that you're using an ad blocker. Um, if you want to continue, um, we'll give you access to some of our premium content if you turn your ad blocker off. Um, so I think what we can tell from looking at these offers is, you know, paid content alone when we set out whether you have um, a, an existing um, strategy, an existing paywall, or whether you're considering implementing a new strategy, um, it's, it's, it's not one, one size fits all, it's not straightforward, it's a moving feast. Um, not only do you need to decide on the model, so whether you're going to go recurring revenue subscriptions, direct transactions, micropayments, etc. Um, but you also need to think about how you're going to package that. Are you going to sell by article, per video, for premium content? Um, and then you also add to that uh, the incentives. So things like vote voucher codes, low star offers, discounts, buy one, get one free. Um, so I think, you know, when the um, CEOs and the top executives, they sit down with the CDOs and they say, we want to sell content. Um, I think, you know, for you or I, you know, when we're working on the floor, um, there are a lot of different considerations. Um, and hopefully what we, we aim to do here um, is, is give a bit of an overview and a summary of them. Okay, so uh, in the interest of sharing ideas, um, what we'd like to do uh, is just introduce a poll now. Um, so what we'd like to know uh, is, is what's working for you, uh, which tactics have been successful. Uh, we've put a number of different options on the screen. Unfortunately, we were limited to five. Um, so, uh, you know, if the one that you're using or if you have um, some insight to share, uh, please do that in the, the chat section as well. Um, but if you could take a minute, um, we'll start the poll. And um, we'll just move on uh, to the second section of the presentation. Um, and what I'd like to do now, I think we've looked at some of the offers, we've looked at some of the models, uh, we've summarized uh, the fact that not only do we need to look at models um, and strategies, product packaging, um, but we also need to look at incentives. But what I'd like to do now um, is start to discuss uh, what comes next. Um, so MPP Global, we're innovators in this space, uh, we're ahead of the curve, we spend a lot of time looking for the trends and looking for new innovative means by which to acquire more consumers. Um, so what I'd like to talk about now um, is uh, some of the uh, more innovative approaches that focus on data and personalization. So, um, I'll talk about this in more depth as we go through the next few slides, but I think we've all heard the buzzwords, we've all heard personalization. If we look at this from uh, an advertising revenue point of view, we're already seeing programmatic advertising. Uh, if you ever visit a website quite regularly, you're followed around by the sites that you've been visiting. Um, and I think we know that personalization works. Uh, I think we're all agreed on that. Um, I think the, the other consideration is that all of our readers are different people. So in the example on the slide here, um, these are just three examples, by the way. Obviously, um, you know, we're all different people. Uh, we're all different demographics. But um, the example here is we have three triplets. Um, on paper, uh, they're the same age, they're the same gender. 
But actually, the behavior is very different. We have the high income viewer who's not uh, in any way price sensitive. Uh, maybe she only needs three articles to be hooked and she wants to buy the all you can eat package. Um, but then we also have an occasional viewer. Um, you know, in the same way, uh, this is probably me, by the way, folks. Um, you know, I, I might not sign up for, um, you know, a, a full subscription, um, but I'll happily buy little pieces of bite-sized content um, as I go. So I might take a trial offer, I might buy an individual article, for example. Um, and then you've also got a sort of social viewer here as well. Um, so maybe she wants to buy unbundled content, maybe she likes videos, maybe she likes particular genres, she has specific interests. So as you can see, although on paper the demographics are very similar, um, by tracking and understanding our behavior and using analytics to better understand your consumers and how they engage with your content, you can make your offers more specific and more relevant. Um, and I'm a firm, firm believer um, that when we're talking about product marketing, uh, it's very important um, to have the right person, the right product but also in real time. Um, so MPP Global, um, what we're doing at the moment is we're focusing on data um, and personalization. We're looking at a lot of information, be it anonymous, behavioral information, you know, subscriber, we're looking at churn management. Um, in some cases, we're starting to use machine learning to predict to predict churn, um, and we want to understand, you know, what the conversion points are, which pieces of your content uh, consumers particularly like. So we're doing two things. At a very high level, um, we're looking at the overview data, um, so numbers of subscribers, you know, uh, most uh, popular um, sort of product codes, etc. Um, but at the same time, we're starting to um, enrich um, individual um, user records in the CRM in our back office. Um, so you can see here as an example, um, might be a little bit small on the screen, but what we're looking at here is sort of total number of subscribers, the number of subscribers that are likely to churn, for example. Uh, we're looking at which voucher codes are most often redeemed, which numbers of offers are most often redeemed. If you have access to this data in real time as a tool, this helps inform your product strategy. Because as we've said before, it's a moving feast. Uh, it's, not a, it's not a static thing. You know, you will develop your strategies, your offers, your incentives as you learn and as you grow and as you gain data um, from your consumers. Um, so this is what we, we, we're aiming to enable really, is, is not just data, um, but actually, we know which bits of data are important, but how do we make those pieces of data actionable, and how do we build those into part of a personalization strategy? Um, so we can see an example here. Um, we're going to look particularly um, at the Irish Times digital edition, uh, and in the bottom left corner, um, what they're attempting to do here is how, take a very personalized approach. Uh, so the consumers asked to provide information about the content that they like, the device that they're using, which papers they like to read. But actually, we've already captured all of this information. Um, so why not, um, since we have this data and information, start to personalize the offers and incentives that consumers see in real time whilst consumers are on your site? Um, so this is all about, um, you know, the flexibility that you have in the platform. It's all about being able to bundle or debundle content, perhaps just have a sports pass or, a, you know, a lifestyle pass, for example. Um, and I think what's very clever about what we're seeing emerging from a technology point of view is that actually now the platforms exist that make this kind of common sense personalization and packaging very, very achievable. Um, so here we have an example of uh, the Winnipeg Free Press. It's quite nice actually because this is a regional publication um, and actually they've won quite a lot of awards over the last um, year or so for their approach. Um, they've introduced um, an all-you-can-eat subscription alongside a micropayment model. Um, so they sell article, you know, by individual article or a full package, a full subscription. 
Um, but what's clever about Winnipeg is that they're actually personalizing um, using sort of rule-based decisioning. Um, so these, these platforms, eSuite e in this case, this is MPP Global's eSuite, allow you to start to build um, specific rules um, that redirect users to personalize offers and incentives for them in real time. And as you can see, it's very easy to do now. Um, so the blue um, bars that we see here are the conditions and the green rules are the outcomes. And what you can see here is how we start to build in rules. So we can build uh, maybe by type of content. Um, we can build by genre. We could build by journalist. So what that means for the end user is you can have a rule that says we've noticed you particularly like sport. You've read five sport articles this week. We're going to redirect you to a sports offer page with a free trial. Um, and this works for um, some of the premium models as well. Perhaps we track an anonymous user. And what we do is we notice if they access the site every day for a, a week as an anonymous unregistered user we notice that their content consumption is very high, we can redirect them for a free trial or a low, a low price trial to the premium section um, of the website. So these types of personalizations aid conversion, and we know that personalization has a massive impact on conversion rates. Okay, so just, just to finish, obviously, you know, this uh, webinar today and the look at offers and incentives uh, has been powered by MPP Global. Um, we've talked about acquisition and conversion today, and what you can see here on the slide um, is an overview of um, all of the different areas of the customer lifecycle journey that MPP Global and the eSuite platform support. Uh, so it's not just acquisition and conversion. We really understand everything from the anonymous and visiting user through to providing incentives, um, obviously processing billing, real-time one-click transactions, all these emerging models for paid content, um, and, and having the, the data and the analytics to fully understand what those conversion points are and what the best ways are um, to convert users. Um, important to say um, that, you know, we mentioned at the beginning that part of the problem is inflexible infrastructure. Um, the technology exists today as cloud platform. Um, this is all available out of the box. All of the functionality, all of the offers, the incentives that we've talked about throughout the course of the webinar uh, are fully supported uh, by the eSuite platform. Um, it's very quick to market, it's an end-to-end -end solution, and the most important thing, or one of the nice little key things, is that you don't have to wait. Uh, we just beat our own personal best record and completed our project from beginning to fully implemented and live in two weeks, start to finish. We're very proud of that. Um, so it needn't be a big long journey, you, you can have access to all of these easy to use tools and start experimenting um, with offers and incentives today. Okay, so the overlay over the top here is all of the different modules of eSuite. Um, obviously, I'd be more than happy to pick up with you guys following the webinar if you'd like to know more about our platform and how that supports customer acquisition and subscription management. Um, lastly but not least, um, please do get in touch. I'm happy to talk to you guys uh, directly about any of the information in the slides. Um, also, I'm going to be in uh, Vienna uh, in two weeks from now at the Onefra World Publishing Expo. Uh, so if you're attending, uh, please do come over, say hello, uh, feel free to chat and share some more ideas. Okay, so we'll just have a quick look to see whether we have um, any questions. Okay, um, so I can see one has come through here. Let's have a look. So, do I think that the hard paywall is something that will die out in the long term, considering the Times is a new strategy? Um, personally, um, I would say I don't think that 
the hard paywall will die out. Um, and I think as a strategy, when we look at the conversion rates for the times um, of being over 60%, um, that's actually a strategy that's working quite well for them. They're receiving a good return on revenue. Um, but, it, you know, at the same time, they recognize that uh, there are other ways uh, to make money. And I think it's the same thing about diversifying um, and having a, a number of supplementary revenue streams. Um, so I actually, I think it's very clever um, that they're freeing up uh, their content, driving more traffic to the site, increasing their advertising revenue, and giving themselves more opportunity to engage new readers. Let's have a quick look. What else do we have here? Um, in terms of um, sort of market disruptors, somebody's just asking me um, what the, the, the main market disruptor might be. Um, I think the big game changer here, I think publishing has been talking about uh, big data uh, probably for the last 12 months or so. Um, and I think the two sort of key buzzwords for a lot of people at the moment are big data and personalization. For me, um, I would say um, less important than having lots and lots of data um, is having good quality data um, and making that data actionable. So for me, uh, the development of emerging technologies um, that start to uh, recommend personalized offers and incentives in real time, I think will really make a big change um, in terms of subscriber and acquisition numbers. Okay, we're going to stop there for today, um, but like I say, please do get in touch, come and see us at One IFRA, um, or by all means, uh, search me out on LinkedIn, um, get in touch, have a chat, and thank you very much for your time today.